Alright, so if you're given a spinner and you know that it has four equal sections and you're spinning it over and over again, that means that each section has an equally likely chance of happening. So we have blue and green and orange and red. They each have a 25% chance of happening. So the probability of a red equals the probability of getting an orange equals the probability of getting a green equals the probability of getting a, a blue. Now, the thing is that if you have a certain number of spins, especially a small number, it's very unlikely that you, you will get the exact same results in each category. And that's what we're seeing here. So saying based on the table, what is the experimental probability? So theoretically, everything should be equal, but experimentally, that's not the case. Experimental probability takes the number of successes that you actually had in a trial. So like if you're spinning for blue, how many times did you actually get blue? And then out of the number of trials. So I think a way to interpret this <clears throat> you could say that experimental probability is the number of times you get an outcome you know, like the number of times you get an orange or a red or a green or a blue out of the total number of trials. So it's actually a the experimental probability is what actually happens. So here we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 2 trials. So <coughs> and we landed on red 8 times. So we have an 8 out of 42 chance of actually getting a red, which is what we had here. Now, suppose it was written a different way, which was just theoretically, you know, you have a spinner with four equal categories, you spin it a hundred times, how many times can you expect to get blue or green or orange or red? Well, that's when you use your theoretical probability to have an understanding of what could happen, which is you might expect each of them to occur this close to 25 times.